What's up everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. In the last episode we made some good progress with two Alfheim challenges and we got a little more than halfway through the chapter. And in this episode we'll finish off chapter 9. So here you get a trophy if you kill all the tentacles and all you have to do is ride the crow into the big glowing glowy bit. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure if it's this part or another, or if it's all the tentacle parts that you have to kill. Because there's this, I think it was in the last chapter, or the one before that. Where there was one of these sections, or I might be thinking of something coming up. I don't know, I'm all over the place with that. Now I think is a pretty annoying fight, let's see, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. So, this is one of those triple joy fights. Note, they are called joys, not uh, lusts, like I've been calling them for like three or four episodes now. I would be very surprised if Team Ninja did not get a call to do the jiggle physics. Ugh. This is going well enough so far. Taking hits I don't want to be taking. They have such a wide moveset, too. You know what, let's, uh, let's mess with Durga real quick. So, Durga, like I, I think I might have explained before, has two modes. It has a lightning mode and a fire mode that you activate by doing a, a bullet climax. You switch between the two though, in those ways. The lightning mode is much faster but does much lower damage. Uh, the fire mode does much higher damage but it's obviously slower than the lightning mode. Also, the cool thing about the fire mode is that you become immune to fire damage. Like in uh, the Chapter 3 lava section. And I think it might also make you immune to taking damage when you fight the enraged enemies. Again, like in Chapter... Was it 2 or 3? So, hopefully I remember to use that if we fight enraged enemies again. I think there are some other unique properties about the lightning mode I'm trying to recall. The, char the way the charge modifiers work is that you just hold it down, it brings up the orb, and the more hits you do in a combo, the stronger the damage dealt when the orb detonates is. So if you do, I think it's up to three hits, so if you do three hits with, say, the fire one, and then charge the orb up, it'll explode and do way more damage than if you only did one hit in a combo. Down here we have a hidden verse if we break some of the statues, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just looking around for... I think there's an LP behind a gate somewhere. There it is. So, originally, the LPs and the hidden chests were... They weren't really ever supposed to be hidden in the first place. The LPs were always meant to be very, very easy to find. And originally, they weren't quite as easy as they are now. I think one of the producers complained after a test play, a gentleman by the name of Hashimoto, that he couldn't find them, so they wound up moving the LPs into easier-to-spot chests. And then later... I was bored anyway. One second. Let me go whip some things in the shape for you. Do you hear that? Oh man, that's really cool. So in case you didn't notice, uh, the ride of the Ride of the Valkyries is playing in the background when Rodan says he's going to whip something into shape and when he disappears for a bit. That song is what uh, Kilgore plays in Apocalypse Now when they attack a Vietnamese village. Wait a minute, I might be so dumb. So the song referenced by each golden LP is probably playing in the background whenever you turn an LP into Rodan. And I probably just never noticed that until now. That's still really cool, though. So I'll talk, I'll talk more about Kilgore in a second. 
Uh, what, I was in the middle of saying something about the LPs. Oh, so Kamiya was, was watching his little brother play, and he was having a hard time finding one of the chests in particular. And by then, even Kamiya had forgotten where this chest is, so they had to look it up online. And I'm guessing it's the one that we just got uh, to complete Kilgore. Because that one's a little weird and out of the way. Oh, and I was talking about the hidden verses. So if you are doing really, really well throughout each chapter, you know, you're platin platinuming or pure platting all the verses, and you still notice that your score is a little bit low, or not your score, but your ranking, like you're only getting a gold for some reason at the end of each chapter, you're probably missing hidden verses, which counts towards your uh, towards your end game ranking or your end chapter ranking. And I think hidden verses includes the Alfheim challenges. There are the regular hidden verses that are just kind of out of the way and just include fighting a couple minor enemies sometimes, and then the the Alfheim challenges. And if you skip doing a bunch of those, it'll it'll tank your whatever rating you received or whatever medal. So these golems don't get the formal introduction that the normal angels get because they aren't, they're neither angels nor demons. They're kind of mechanized constructs that the sages and the witches built. And they can be a little tough to fight. Not so much on normal, it can be a little bit of a pain to get an opening or to exploit that opening, rather. Especially with the Malthus version there. So as, you, so as you can see, they are taking... It is taking the form of Bayonetta's Infernal Demons. And if when you play this on harder difficulties, this golem here, and obviously subsequent ones... Are there subsequent ones? I don't remember. Anyway, they can take on the forms of Infernal Demons that Bayonetta transform... They can take on infernal demon forms that have not been seen up until this point. Wow, how many hits did I not connect with there? Damn. Come on. I hate when he turns into Malthus. Because between the tornadoes and the storm eagle swooping attack, it's very difficult to hit him. Oh, I think he might just be doing this because I'm trying to keep at a distance. Yeah, as soon as I close the distance, he stops doing that. Oh, right. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore that I just got and have not yet used. So, this is next to Shiraba, my favorite item. So, this is how it has really, really high damage and it is ranged. Uh, it is a good stagger rate. This is how sick the rocket launchers are, though. The actual in-game description for them states that they house the soul of Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore from Apocalypse Now. Like, how awesome is that? Uh, Jean's alternate version is much less cool. It's called Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Slade, which also houses Slade's soul. Slade being from Son of a Woman, which auto automatically makes it less cool than Kilgore. Also, there is... There are shenanigans that go along with Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore that I will show off sometime later. They involve combining Kilgore and Durga in a specific way. I'm not going to be exploiting that too much because... It is a little bit cheap, but it is super, super fun. Also, I'm pretty sure hit for hit, uh, Kilgore is the highest damaging weapon in the entire game. It's just, it's very, very slow to make up for the, all the damage it does. And of course, what would a Bayonetta be? What would a Bayonetta episode be without a long, long backtracking segment? 
towards an Alfheim challenge. Oop. Got myself a little turned around there for a second. Yeah, and this is a pretty significant bit of backtracking. Oh, no! No! Oh. Oh, wow. I thought that might have killed me. Let's not die. Okay. I think I might have already died. Did I die earlier? Yeah, I think I died to the kinships. Uh, it's very upsetting. This one is one of the... Yeah, this is another limited kicks and punches one. So, can you guys guess what the strategy is for this Alphine? I bet you can. Did you say abuse the shit out of Lajutsu? Good job, here's your happy face sticker. So, yeah. Oh! He, like, he parried me or something. Come on, come on, let me activate Witch Time. Stubborn bastard. God damn it. The rule of thumb is in effect. Whoa. I thought I wasn't keeping track of my health. Okay, so first time I was arrogant, and then I timed out twice in a row. This time, though, this time I win. There's one. I wonder how many this takes exactly. That didn't look like... Oh no, it did hit the second one. The blue ones are fearless, and the red... The orange ones are fairness, I believe, so it did damage to the fearless. Yeah, the twin enemy names trip me up a little bit. Like, Grace and Glory, I don't know which one's which, and then fearless and fairness. Where are these enchants? No, I know I've done this before with the enchants. The enchants are the wheel skeletons. Oh no, I'm taking damage. Not good. Okay, I'm gonna focus a little bit. Make sure I don't have to do a fifth attempt at this. Oh yeah! Okay, I'm pretty sure I've got this. The deepest cut. That's cool. What is that? Oh yeah, that's probably for uh, doing so many Lajutsu kills or something. I'm surprised I don't already have that. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing left in this chapter. We just have to get back to uh, where we were. Hmm. Yeah, because where we fought the golem... We went upstairs to get a chest, up a little pathway on the left, and then forward, you make a descent, and that's the end of the chapter. So yeah, we just have to get back there, and then chapter 9 is done. So we're getting pretty deep into the game. There are only seven chapters left, and three of those are boss chapters. And I'm pretty sure of those four that are boss chapters, at least one or two of them are really, really short, like Route 666 was. So even though it felt like it took a ton of time just to get to this point in the game, things are speeding up significantly now. Also, I've heard something about Odette that you move just as quickly with Odette once you build the momentum up as you do with Panther Form, but I'm not so sure of that. Maybe it's just because the way the Panther feels, like it has way better game feel. Maybe that's why it doesn't seem like that, because the camera pulls back, it has all these effects going around it, where Odette just kind of leaves this blase little trail behind you. I don't know. Let's say gold. Looks like a definite gold. Then again, that death might have really killed me. I was definitely not expecting bronze. Then again, I did skip that one hidden verse you can see there. Yeah, and that's how you can tell if you're missing a hidden verse. Is the metal for it will be grayed out.
Ugh. So, anyway. <laughs> that's gonna do it for this episode, folks. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out my channel for a playlist for all of my other Let's Plays, like uh, the Banjo-Kazooie one, Shadows Damned, Osiris Wrath, Limbo, all the good stuff. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.